Hi folks, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm continuing this month's portrait theme by painting a girl's face in watercolour. I'm going to be using a similar process to the one I used in my Paint With Me video last Friday, so if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link in the card above so you can go and check it out. Don't worry if you haven't seen it though, as I will be talking you through my process again today as the painting takes shape. The paints I'm using are the Schmincke Horodam Aquaworld watercolour paints, which I mostly have in pans with a few extra colours in tubes, but all the items I'm using will be listed in the description box below. So before I begin the actual painting itself, I usually like to study my reference picture and test out some paint mixes to try and make a good skin tone. I'll also put a link in the description box to the reference picture I used for this portrait, just in case you're interested or want to have a go at this painting yourself. If you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel where I upload videos twice a week on all things art related. So let's crack on with the painting. I began with a light sketch in pencil on my watercolour paper which I taped down to my board and as you'll see I also decided to apply masking fluid today which is coloured blue on the paper. I chose to use masking fluid because I had a lot of aims for this piece and being that keeping things light and bright was one of them, I felt masking fluid would help, especially with fine hairs, highlights in the eyes and on the lips. When painting with watercolour it's best to work in layers from light to dark as it's easier to go darker but harder to go lighter. Using masking fluid is a good way to preserve those lightest areas, allowing you to focus on other things like skin tone, value and of course controlling the water. And speaking of water, I thought I'd start the face using the wet on wet technique, covering the whole face except for the eyes in clean water before dropping in some of the skin tone I'd mixed, concentrating more colour on areas of shadow, so around the sides of the face, under the nose and under the eyes. In the reference picture this girl is wearing a shawl over her head so both sides of her face are largely in shadow. I chose this reference picture incidentally just because the eyes are absolutely amazing and really caught my attention when I was looking for inspiration. So with watercolour you can continue to drop in colour all the while the paper is still wet, but you do need to be careful as once the paper begins to dry the colours won't blend and bleed together so easily. Instead you may get blooms where more water or paint has been added which might not be what you want. So if in doubt wait it out, let your paper dry fully before adding another layer of colour on top. And speaking of drying your paper, one thing worth mentioning is that if you intend to use masking fluid, do test out first whether or not it can be easily removed from your paper after being heated by the hairdryer. I have yet to find a masking fluid which is still easy to remove after being hair dried, so this is something to bear in mind when planning out your process as you may need to allow more time for the paper to dry naturally. So once I'd finished with the initial layers on the face I moved on to the girl's hair. The hair in the photograph is dark blonde but I tend to avoid using yellow for this as often blonde hair has many different colours to it, ranging from brown to green and so on. Yellow can look a bit artificial so I mixed up olive green with sepia and just put a dilute wash over the main part of the hair to start with. Now the face had dried I could move back and paint the eyes. It's really important with watercolour not to work on areas adjacent to one another whilst they're still wet, as the colours will likely bleed together. You can still make the most of your time though by painting areas that have dried or aren't next to wet areas. As for the eye study I did in my last video, I painted the whites of the girl's eyes blue, which although looks a bit scary now, is far more natural than the white of the paper. Watercolour also dries a lot lighter, so what looks quite noticeable now will look much less dramatic once dry. With all the main areas mapped out and dried, it was time to add some contrast to the portrait by removing the masking fluid from the face. Now at this point it looked like I'd gone in and totally obliterated those lovely highlight areas that I'd carefully taken the trouble to mask off, but bear in mind that I'd put the masking fluid directly onto the white paper and didn't want them bright white. My aim was to soften the harsh edges and add a subtle hint of skin tone while still maintaining a much lighter area. To add further contrast to the face I then went in with some darker values around the eyes, nose and mouth. It's worth saying at this point that the area under the girl's eyes is pretty dark, but this dark shadow is how it appears on the reference photo and will look more cohesive with the addition of more contrast on the face as the painting goes on. 
Then it was time to add some detail to the lips, which are again pretty dark, but this colour does lighten a fair bit once dry. This is something I still need to constantly remind myself of and why getting colours and values right with watercolour can be tricky and why practice and patience are crucial. My main aim for the piece today was to paint something light, vibrant and eye-catching without overworking it. I love how watercolour can be built up in transparent layers and how those transparent layers allow light to really shine through. But without confidence and expertise, too many layers can leave your painting with a dull matte finish and working too tightly doesn't show watercolour off at its best. I was conscious right from the start of the method and techniques I was going to use and what colours I was going to mix. I wanted to use bolder colours, less layers and loosen up in my painting and to finish up with a vibrant, luminous work of art, all before the school run. But although I'm determined, nothing can beat practice. After all, most professional watercolourists have spent many, many years of learning and practising their art. So if you are an expert or professional watercolourist, then please feel free to give me some tips or feedback in the comments box below. But regardless of whether this portrait turned out as well as I'd wanted it to, I did enjoy the process and the whole experience has left me really keen to keep practicing different methods and techniques in watercolour in order to loosen up and use less brush strokes to prevent overworking that paint and paper. If you're just starting out in watercolour, don't be scared to have a go and don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how we learn. I recently watched a video from Lindsay the Frugal Crafter called My Number One Tip for Better Art, which I'll link in the card above. It's really good and it's about taking risks with your art and learning from mistakes, so go and check it out if you've not seen it. So anyway, back to the painting and it was high time I got this portrait out of the ugly stage it had spent so much time in. At several stages during this piece I was getting frustrated and it would have been easy to have given up on it, but being pretty stubborn I pushed through and carried on, and by now time was getting on so I had to get my skates on. And then it was almost as if the lack of time I had left to finish the portrait forced me to rush, and rushing forced me to loosen up, so I threw some paint at the girl's shawl and I kind of liked where it went. I used the wet on wet method again using clean water first and then dropping in a mixture of transparent red deep with a hint of neutral tint. The paint bled over the lines of my pencil sketch and I did actually like it. It wasn't perfectly smooth but it was fun. And whilst this was still wet I then added some darker values to the inside of the girl's shawl which helped to add contrast. And this got me thinking, thinking back to Inktober where I was doing a painting every day. Often I had to rush and didn't have time to overthink or overwork my paintings. I had to go with the flow and if it didn't turn out great then I'd do another painting the next day. So perhaps I need to learn from that and from today's painting. Loosen up and not worry so much about the end product as much as the lessons learned along the way. I mean, today's portrait turned out okay in the end but I still feel that I added too many layers and ended up with a more matte finish overall than the luminous one I was after. I think that although with watercolours you need to work light to dark, if the area you want to paint is very dark, like the inside of the girl's shawl here, then starting too light means you need to add many layers to build up to the value you want. And the more layers you add, the more matte the result, so I think I can afford to be a bit bolder with colour next time. Another thought is to do more of a tonal underpainting to map out the different values first, and then go in strong with the next layer. So these are all things that I'm looking forward to trying in the future. So finally it was time to remove the masking fluid from the girl's hair and I was pretty pleased with this as the bright flyaway hairs added more light to the portrait. All I had to do now was add a fuller range of values to the hair, so went in with some more sepia and further darkened up the area underneath the shawl. I then pushed those values even further by going in with another layer on the side of the face and the area inside the shawl on the right hand side there. So I feel like I did pull it together in the end and it wasn't too bad but it just felt like quite a lot of hard work and I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I wanted to because I spent quite a lot of time worrying about it. 
Watercolour can be tricky, but with it brings a variety, versatility and endless possibilities for you to express yourself. Today's painting has made me reassess my processes and helped me realise what I like and I've come up with some different things to try. But the important thing is to have fun, take some risks, except you won't always get it right. But if you don't, you'll always learn something new. And that's the main thing. So anyway folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget as well to hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video and that will be twice a week now. If you want to come along and draw with me this Friday, I'm going to be doing another eye study but this time we'll be drawing wrinkles with soft pastels. So hopefully you'll join me for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Bye!